concerns as about what's actually being priced in. Is it higher rates or is it more about economic conditions or maybe a bit of both? The Bloomberg dollar spot index trying to reassert itself once again here. Bitcoin not getting any love. And I guess if you're looking for a respite from some of the big moves that we had seen in the energy space, you at least got it today. WTI crude back below 90 bucks a barrel. Let's get Abigail Doolittle into this conversation as we do every day at this time for our options inside segment. And Abigail was just taking a look at the VIX here up for what seventh of the past 10 days here, camped out around 17. A big question is why is it continuing to move higher? Well, all that uncertainty you were just talking about, Romaine, whether uh, yields, if that's higher for longer or it has something to do with the global economy. And of course, we have this China weakness. We also have action in the yen, all of it coming together. And I can't think of a better person to discuss the intersection of these topics than Samantha LaDuke, founder of LaDuke Trading. Great to have you with us, Samantha. And so Romaine is talking about the VIX. When I take a quick look, a simple look at the chart, it looks as though it could pop very quickly above 20, which would suggest there will be more volatility for stocks to the downside, maybe even significantly higher. What are you seeing there? Definitely dollar and yields are making the weather, right? So when we actually had back in July 31st, a very large treasury issuance, August 1st was when we started to roll over in markets. So underneath there was definitely, definitely already breath breaking down and there was net selling, but yields were really the, the tell, right? We had this issuance and it was large. Yield started moving higher with the dollar and they make the weather. So right now, I'm not really liking these odds. VIX has definitely percolated because we needed a trigger, which was FOMC, right, last Wednesday. And as soon as Powell got off the podium, we obviously had the volatility because he obviously made the call, basically, that the Fed funds rate for 2024 was going to increase from 4.6% to 5.1% and basically pulled out two cuts um, from the market that the market had been pricing in. So the dollar and yields are at a very, very important level. 106 on the Dixie, 4.5% in the 10 year. Um, and that means above that level is actually even more volatile. And I'm actually looking at a gamma level in the market right now and a JP Morgan collar structure that says we could actually tag 4,200 by Friday. Yeah, well, it's interesting that you're bringing up that issuance of treasuries in late July, because what I've been talking about or thinking about was that Fed meeting in July where the Fed indicated that they're not going anywhere. They confirmed that that's last week, but that makes a lot of sense what you're talking about with uh, that issuance, given the fact that we've seen the dollar index, a currency, go up uh, about 5% over that time period, really pretty unheard of. So, you know, when we connect rising yields, rising dollar to the VIX, to volatility, what is it? What is the connection there? What uh, makes it so unsettling for traders? Is it just the money coming out of the system? Oh, definitely. We have uh, liquidity that's leaving versus coming in, but we also have a structure called negative gamma. So uh, positive begets buying and negative begets selling if we trigger particular levels. And there are CTAs and other quants that basically have price insensitive buying and selling. We have right now what's called kind of a put wall, which is this kind of 4,300 for SPX. If we go through that, that triggers even more outside selling. We happen to have a JP Morgan caller, which happens to be a very large hedge. It's rolled every quarter. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But there is a very stickiness to some of these levels that helps pin the market or pull the market. In this particular case, uh, we have a, 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 that caller, which is at 4,210 for this September 29th. Uh, which is the uh, quarterly expiration for September. It looks very much like the market wants to go there. Yeah, and very quickly, Samantha, when I take a look at a chart of the S&P 500, we did go below one level that suggests support is giving way, that there is a trap door there to some degree. What would it take to go below 4,200, and uh, how much further down would we go if we were to do so? Well, one thing that I'm looking for that's an economic data point this week, I think uh, all eyes are on GDP revision, believe it or not. Um, this is this Thursday, and one of the things that the Fed has managed to do is obviously um, remove two potential uh, Fed cuts in their last week FOMC meeting. This particular um, revision downward in GDP could show that the one of the reasons they removed the cuts, by the way, was on the strength of the economy. Right. That revision this Thursday could actually undo some of that, which would be good for bondholders, right? They're, they're suffering terribly. Yes. Um, as, <laughs> so it could soften yields. Uh, it could put a short-term duration bid in um, bonds and equities, but more importantly, is a slowing 
backdrop for the economy, yep. bullish equities? That's the big question. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for weighing in on all of these topics. Very helpful, as always. Samantha LaDuke, founder of LaDuke Trading. Thank you for joining us for Options Insight today. And from New York, this is Bloomberg. Thank you.